Hello, my sexy, sexy cat beats. I'm Reviewbot, and welcome back to some reviews. Either way, today's review Star Wars Republic Commando. A game made by Lucas Films, if I remember correctly. I think that's the company name. Either way, it had Lucas in the name, and, I, and when I found that out after beating the game, I was like. So George Lucas actually knows how to make a game good, but he doesn't know how to make a good movie on his own. Suspicious. And I know what you're thinking. I just put George Lucas, video games, and good in the same sentence. Let me explain. Republic Commando is a game where you play as, what the frick is name? I think it was 38. Either way, your team is Delta and you're all each a part of a full human, apparently. You know, you're clone troopers, you're part of the Republic. I have no idea because I don't really read the lore like you hardcore Star Wars fans do. The most I actually went to the, looking into the lore of the clones or anything of that sort was watching the Clone Wars and eventually the TV show that came with that, you know, continued off of the style. Honestly, I enjoyed it. One minute, please. Yeah, obviously I enjoyed the thing, but it's not like, oh my god. I want to know every single thing. I want to know how these things are created. Either way, I'm just going to get off of that topic real quick. I actually wrote down notes because I want this shit to be more structured and actually have a flow to it. On number two, I wrote, gameplay is fun. And I want to write notes. I It's like thumb, it's the thud notes. It's short, sweet, nothing is specified it's all that so I mean like the gameplay is fun it's okay and this is why it, and it's has a, like it has a lot of strong points just a lot of enemies I have no idea of their names like there's the separatists and you know the droids there's that droid that just rolls like it's a freaking armadillo and the droid that shoots a thing out of its arm is supposed to be threatening. I never knew why it was threatening. I actually thought the skinnier bot droids were more threatening than that thing because, here's the thing, in the Clone Wars, all I seen that thing do was just shoot la laser out of one wrist. One wrist! But in this game, they stepped it up. They, it doesn't just shoot lasers out of its wrist, it shoots a whole rocket out of its wrist. I'm like, where's the rocket coming from? That thing shot eight rockets out of its little mouth there. Where'd it come from? And because it's a game that was made a good while ago, I didn't really question it too much. It was made in 2007. You didn't really have to question... You, you didn't question video games back then. After all, you didn't question why Mario ate a bunch of mushrooms and, and all that. Right. <clears throat> In terms of gra- like, graphics don't really decide my opinion of these things, but I do think it's like something that you do have to mention. Like, you know, so let's say you were playing Call of Duty, which is always something that has a graphical increase. Technically speaking, you don't really need to say anything, but you're like, okay, the graphics were better than the last one. They didn't look like the same one the last time. But you have, I do feel like it's specif- I do need to specify that this doesn't decide my review at all. It does, like, it shows age, but it also feels, it's a, it feels like a style, you know? This one, it's interesting. I, at least I find it interesting. Because the uniform, your uniform, at least as far as you can see, because in the game, there's technically no such thing as cutscenes. There are moments where your character, where you can't move your character and you're listening to dialogue. So 
So technically speaking, you could argue that the whole game is like a whole playable cutscene. And personally, I actually like a game that's like that. It, it's something that took me out of what I was used, you know, I've been used to for so long. Both from indie games and from triple A's. I actually can't... If another, if an indie game actually does that, I would be impressed. I would really be impressed with them. You know what, you're trying something that's against the norm. Now one thing I definitely, like, this is off of that thing, this is a little bit of side tangent, but, uh, the thing that, that, you know, a lot of developers seem to fail at is trying to make the seamlessness between cutscene and, seamlessness, the seamlessness between cutscene and gameplay, because then that helps with your immersion. You're like, okay, I can put my controller down. This is a cutscene, like I always do when I play Halo. Just letting you know I stopped playing Halo after Halo 4, that thing was a complete travesty. <coughs> yeah, it... Darn it, I lost... I lost track, it... Okay. Yeah, you know I like how the cutscenes in Halo are, they're heavy on the CGI. I actually do like how the cutscenes look. They're very entertaining to look at, but when you compare it to something, like, it's a game that's shittier, but, uh, what was it called? The game is literally named after a year, and it's a year I don't care about because it's steampunk. You know, you know that game where you fight wolves and vampires, but instead of calling them werewolves and vampires, they're called the Lightkins and Halfbreeds. That game had one cutscene where it was completely seamless between gameplay and cutscene. And I never got to play that, but I actually would have loved to at least have played that little bit there. I'd be like, oh, holy shit. You know, it's not if you're hearing my paper. Yeah, I literally have a board size paper thing where I put all of my review notes on and also do a little bit. Oh yeah, what? Okay, back to the back to the actual review. One thing I find a bit annoying about the gameplay is how the AI is intelligent but also not intelligent at the same time. Like for the time. The AI is smarter than the tri AAA game AI I have actually seen in a while. Because I see, guys, when you pop the corner, they'll actually shoot you when they see you, instead of taking a moment. They actually have the instinct to shoot you, but also the robot, so it makes sense. But you're also fighting it, these insectoid enemies that are the hardest thing in the world to freaking kill. At least the one with the super powerful staff is. And that annoyed me every single time. Because it shoots a laser beam, and that th laser beam, like, they didn't balance the laser beam correctly. That thing will shoot endlessly. Unless it gets, unless you get out of its sight. That's the only way you can counter it. And let me tell you this there is not enough above head stuff to hide behind. You're gonna have to really work around with your eight angles there. And, okay. The way the AI is intelligent is that they Okay, I actually already did explain it, but I forgot the mission so far. They take cover and shoot, and shoot you at the same, same time. They actually think a little bit. But at the same time, but also, on the bad side, they, when they do pop out of the cover, they forget to shoot you some, some of the times, and you can just literally go up to them and say, Sup! And stab them in the face. But did I mention that Delta has knives in their arms? Like, it's kinda, I find it cool. By the way, Delta's supposed to be the elite force. And something that got me curious is that they created this elite force 
And they say they just need a command chip to create them? It makes no sense to me that some troopers will be made with a command chip and a whole bunch of them won't. And they'll just be nothing more than cannon fodder. That's one thing that kind of bothered me a little bit. And when I see, for, like, when you buy the game, you actually have the availability to see the developer commentary. Like, it's on the extras. I, I always wanted to see those, but I never wanted to, you know, I never bothered to look at the video, go to their YouTube, go to the developer's YouTube channel and see them. And I'm pretty sure if I do, I won't be seeing, you know, God honest developer commentary. I'll be seeing what, uh, equivalents to them reading off the scripts. But from what I've seen, the, the team on the Lucasfilm films was, uh, they had some passion for this game. They gave it, they actually gave a little bit of a darn. The story is something that you will easily forget, but it's also a little bit fun. The ending has a good, the ending caught me off guard a little bit because how story, how I always read storytelling. Okay. If I were to remember this correctly, this game technically has three or four missions. That's how many missions there actually are in this game, but those missions uh, are so large that it's technically sub-missions within that mission. Like, for instance, you go inside of a Star Destroyer to see what happened like, you know, it's the Republic Star Destroyer. I don't know why we have one. I keep getting confused anytime I watch Star Wars. I'm like, okay, what the fuck happened? Are the clone troopers with us or against us? It's so annoying to figure it out. It always bothered me. Okay, regardless. You got, you got, you Delta team are the only team members that are going in to investigate the Star Destroyer because you're the best team in the universe and you're the only ones that you that they can trust to go on this mission and get them back alive. And each member is sep gets separated to maximize the coverage of, you know, looking around for survivors and finding out what happened. You find out that slavers have taken control of, have been trying to take control of the ship and have prematurely arranged with the Sith to sell the ship. But before that, you you get a, a whole fistful of this new enemy that tries to basically zap your brains out, and that thing takes so much of your damage out that it makes you want to go against the bug creatures instead of those things. And I'm like, oh my god. Kill me. There are so many, there's few fun enemies, and there's a lot of annoying enemies. Like, they did ha make the slavers hard to kill at first, but then easier to kill once you knew how to deal with them. Like, it took me until the last mission, which is the third or fourth mission, don't know how to classify it, the third or fourth mission. Darn, I lost track. Okay, so that works. Okay, by the time you get to the third mission, you already have all the enemies within a rhythm, but now they, like the Lucas team, took, figured that out before they, before they even touched the game. So they mixed it up by having everything be a bit more predictable and easy to get through. They make it hard on the most unreasonable way. Note that this game is also a strategy game where you actually command your team. And there's only very, like, you can't tell them to set at this spot. You only tell them where to set at a spot where the game allows you to tell them to. And they, and you can only tell them to take control of something that the game allows you to take control of. But you know what I mean when I try but, you know, I forgave it for being a 2007 thing because I don't know 
what technology was in was available at 2007. So I kind of overlooked it, but it annoyed the living shit out of me. Cause there's this one segment at the end, at the last mission, where you have to get through a bridge, and it's blocked off by all these droids, the big dro and it's just the heavy droids, and the heavy droids are the hardest ones to take out because they're a lot harder than they are to kill than they look like when you're fighting them in the Clone Wars. Mm. Takes a lot of bullets. Well, lasers. So, I died so many times on that spot. Now, I should probably tell, say, tell you guys how the uh, death system works. You can die, you can get, you can go down and you have the option to call for your men to pick, to, you know, get you up or have them continue your order or reload to the last save. If all your men die, then you reload to the last save regardless. It sounds like a sound system, but it's also annoying. The game also allows you to make personal saves, which is actually a good thing because the checkpoints are so far in between each other that you would want to do that no matter what. It's annoying. Alright, I need to look... Oh yeah. When it comes to multiplayer, it's dead. I tried to look up... I tried to play some of the multiplayer. I was on Queen for at least 15 minutes. So I was like, fuck this. So I just labeled it as dead. Trying to look up another one. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. There's also a point inside of the uh, third mission where your sound might break, but it's just that spot where it breaks. I have no idea where, where that is. Where is it? Okay, I'm trying to look. I'm checking my notes to see if I skip something. Mm-hmm. It is one of those games. Oh yeah, okay. One thing I do want to say, it's definitely a game that knows that you can do better than what Nintendo thinks you can do. Because come on. If you play any of Nintendo's games, you can play them in your sleep. Like, come on. You can play Wii Sports by sitting on your couch and waddling the stick all day. You can basically play Mario on half brain dead mode, no matter what thing you're on. The only time you can't do that is you're playing Mario Maker. I haven't, like, I only played Mario once on the DS and I was like, nope. Nope. Not playing this again. I just didn't like it. I, it's not like it was hard. It was... I played games that were better to me. Not that I was still playing on a GameCube at that time. And I was not... Uh, also, I had a 360. Okay. Oh well, yeah. One neat thing to note is that your character is voiced by the what by the person that played Django Django Pet. If I said that correctly, I have no idea. And he actually tries to add some uh, comedy to your character, slight comedy. You know, something that a uh, commander would make a joke of, like, "Don't try to blow us up with your explosives or whatever." I kind of appreciate that I tried to add more character to what the writers kind of make a bit bland. Like what I've seen for the writers, at least from what I could tell, is that uh, they wrote, they just wrote the lines and they did, and that was it. Because a lot of things are spit out at you, you know? 
it doesn't really feel of any you can't like, make the urgency by yourself like the okay uh kind of think of a game that puts like it just regurgitates the lines at you I'm thinking Call of Duty 4 does that actually you know on the loading screen thing where you're getting the mission briefing exhibition is just thrown at you without any special banter between you and the guy that's kind of how it is yep I think that's all I think that's all the notes I didn't really want to spoil, spoil this story I well one thing I can tell is that Yoda's in there for literally no reason He's just a character that shows up at the end. Mm. You must forget him. You will. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about that twist at the end of the game. Yeah. My favorite character, I think he was 07. I think that's what his designation is. Delta 07. As far as we know, he's dead. But at the same time, knowing right, knowing uh, game writing... He's probably still alive, because if you don't see a character die yourself, he's probably not dead. Either way, that game had a sequel baiting cliffhanger, and I was really annoyed. One thing that also got me a bit peeved was the simple fact that, is that the levels I was on were extra levels? And I was like, if this must be extra levels, and this game left off on a bigger cliffhanger than I could ever think of. And if... Made me wonder if there was even more extra levels I didn't get to, but I was like, I don't want to go through this, through the whole thing again, going through it more thoroughly. It was, it was that big of a hell to go through a little bit. Well, it's too big of a hell for me to do it, to do it all over again, because some, because the way that it, the enemies are placed, it's just like the game's set up to be against you, no matter what. And it takes my legendary Dark Souls luck to finish. You know, when I try to beat that giant thing, I think it was, I think he's a second boss. Is it? Yeah, definitely think he's a second boss. I beat the sec second boss by being stupid. I fell down a cliff and then the boss fell down with me. <laughs> It was so stupid. But I kind of loved it at the same time. I was like, oh my god. Like, come on, you can't laugh at that. I mean, you can't, you can't not laugh at that moment. And you're probably going to have to rely on that moment to happen a few times in that game. Would I recommend this game to someone? Well, yeah, it's $10, so it's pretty hard not to recommend. And it also actually made, like, uh, I, when I was looking down its update list, it actually showed that, uh, an announcement, uh, they were put on the top ten Star Wars games. I think they were on the fifth. The fifth one, maybe the third one, I don't know. I didn't really pay attention to the numbering. I was like, oh, this is one of the top ten. Either way, I'd like to thank the 60 companies for watching today's video. Thank you for listening to all my banter. Because it was kind of more of complaining, but I love... But believe it or not, I do love this game. It, it, well, I don't love it. I like it. I wouldn't play it again. <laughs> not all the way through. Maybe a little bit. It was, def it was definitely fun to blow, thing to blow things up. And hear people be stupid. So get so I would recommend getting the game. I like the stick to come for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Drink lots of coffee and Okay, everyone, I just wanted to say I do enjoy the characters in the game. It's just that, you know, all those things kinda of make there's things that make it boring. And uh I want I wanna know. For those of you that played the game or have bought the game and then played it all the way through and are watching this video again would you want a sequel of it because there was a uh, lucas films had to do a whole redo of their thing 
of their company and the next thing you know the whole sequel was dropped in early development and there was apparently two stories it could have went with it could have went with this something that connected to a book I can't remember the whole details and another one would make it would make your character the first one of the rebellion and make you uh you know teach the soldiers per se I guess my so yeah would you want a se- a sequel or no I don't know I said I always think about what would happen if people actually believed in me enough to actually grab people to crowdfund something well you know grab people they crowdfund me I hand the money to these people to the talented people like I was like I remember hearing Harry Potter's always saying well once saying not always saying that if he could make a movie of Starbarians he definitely would well it was um, I think that was it I already I only heard listened to the podcast he was on like twice by from Rubber Onion and if I remember correctly there was three things he wanted to do with the series well only one of them was because you know with the Starbarian series he wanted to do it because uh, the, the episodes were taking too long in between and he has a story to tell with it he wants to continue it as a show and then once the show and he wants to also release the comic books and then maybe finish it off with the movie someday. I would love to have the movie funded. <laughs> Knowing Harry Potter's like he only makes like he manages to only get two or three videos out a year. And they're all animated. I would love to see that come come to fruition and considering his uh, pace even with people I'm pretty sure it would take like 10 years I would actually when I look at him I kind of see him as George Lucas if he was filtered well actually that isn't that what how the original Star Wars was made like it was still with George Lucas but he had teams of it was a team of directors with him that helped him filter down his bullshit and make the prequels like you know he made the prequels and everybody hated the prequels but the original movies he had assistance with or if he or if he didn't then you know that's it I I don't really look into directors and actors when it comes to movies like you should probably know that by the fact that I watched and enjoyed the Clone Wars one of the reasons why I enjoyed the Clone Wars was because Characters actually died and it also went into the story of the clone troopers a little bit more than just Hey, they're cannon fodder. They're supposed to do everything the Jedi tell them. I can I always like it when either the villains or the side characters get a little bit of a story. Even just a little bit. Something either something with items or something that's being directly told. It's always interesting to me. You'd be surprised at how much of this shit I like to watch. <laughs> Either way, that's all I wanted to say. Drink loads of coffee. Bye.